بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His entire household, all his companions We ask Allah to bless them, to bless every single one of us To grant us acceptance in this beautiful month of Ramadan To grant us forgiveness, to accept from us the fasts that we have engaged in the prayer, the extra prayer that we have engaged in and to help us to enhance and to help us to protect ourselves, to develop ourselves in a way that we earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, this evening we will be speaking about an encyclopedia from amongst the encyclopedias that existed at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A person who was very small in stature, which means his build was extremely small he was very thin and at the same time he was one of the most knowledgeable of the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam coming from a very very poor background in Makkah al-Mukarramah he used to work for a man known as Uqbah ibn Abi Mu'ayt so who was this great companion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his name was Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu initially at the time when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was bestowed with prophethood he was a little boy and he used to be a shepherd who took the sheep of Uqbah ibn Abi Mu'ayt and he used to go into the outskirts of Makkah al-Mukarramah it is reported in some narrations that Bilal ibn Rabah radiallahu anhu did the same with the sheep of another man and that was Abdullah ibn Jad'an before he was given to Umayyah ibn Khalaf. That was Bilal ibn Rabah. But Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, there is no dispute regarding the fact that he was a shepherd and he used to actually take the sheep of Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayr on the outskirts of Mecca early in the morning and come back late in the evening. So he heard that there is a messenger and there's things happening in Mecca, but he did not know exactly who it was and the exact details because number one he was quite young and number two is that he was a person who was far away from the the city or the inside of where everything was happening so abdullah ibn masood radiallahu anhu says one day i saw two men coming in my direction the outskirts of mecca and i had these sheep with me so as they came closer to me now one of them was abu bakr as-siddiq radiallahu anhu and the other one was muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so he says, I saw the two of them coming towards me. And then the one asks me that, do you have some milk? And I said, well, I have sheep, but the milk does not belong to me. So a little while later, he says, well, can you give us one of the sheep that is very young, that has not yet produced any milk at all? No, none. it has not produced any milk. He said, yes, that much we can do. So he brings us a small little sheep. So Muhammad sallallahu was seated there. So he touched the others of the sheep and he made a dua. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. And he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them from the sustenance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's miracle. And what happened is suddenly, and the young boy says, I witnessed this with my own eyes. I saw that the others began to swell and Muhammad sallallahu milked this sheep and at the same time he gave me to drink I drank Abu Bakr drank he drank as Siddiq radiallahu an Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and he says I was stunned looking at this and immediately when we were finished he touched the others once again and said something and it returned exactly as it was such that if I were to tell anyone, they would not even believe my story. Subhanallah. But I knew what happened. So immediately I told him, please teach me the words you said. Teach me what is the, what are these words? I want to know what you said. This is something unique. And I know you have not taken from the property of my boss because this was definitely not from him. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, you are an educated youngster, which means don't worry, you will have this knowledge. Subhanallah. He says, I was so excited when I used to see these two men, I used to get so delighted. A few days later, he sat with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he accepted Islam. So this was Abdullah ibn Mas'ud.
but he was a very young boy. He was such a young boy that he was considered one of the youth or one of the youngsters who accepted Islam. He was not considered as one of the men who accepted Islam. And yet it was close to the beginning of the call to Islam. It is reported that thereafter, he said, O Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I've been serving this man Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayyat as a worker. He was getting a payment for it. And I would like to leave looking after the sheep and I want to serve you. So Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took him in his service. We heard about Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu in Medina Munawwara. And this is Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. The narrations say that it started off in Mecca. So when he was a young boy, he offered himself to the service of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was very small. They say his hands were actually so small that when he used to make a dua, they used to say, these little hands are actually minute. When he used to stand, he used to be shorter than some of those who were seated. Subhanallah. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. And yet he started serving Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the small little person. Amazing. So it is reported that he used to quickly take off the shoes of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he used to carry them. Whenever Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was barefoot and he used to quickly give them back to him when he wanted to walk, make him wear them. And he used to hold the stick of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and give the stick back. And he used to open the door of his house as he wanted to go in. So much so that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him, Oh Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, you are allowed to enter my home without permission at any time of the day or the night because obviously he's a young boy and he was serving Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he says, I used to enter the house of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at any time. That was one gift. And another is, I used to know the inner secrets of what occurred in his home at that stage, in the early stages. So he was known as Sahibu Sawadaini wa Na'layn, the one who was granted these two gifts one was the secret of Allah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, meaning knowing what was, was going on and to be able to enter and exit his home at any, any time. And the other, Sahibun Na'layn, meaning the one who used, had the honor of carrying the shoes of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or his slippers, Subhanallah. And he was also known as Sahibu Saqain. And we will tell you what that means in a few moments. In fact, it refers to the calves of a person. So this man was the one with the two, with the calves. Now we all have these calves, but why is it that he was referred to that? Inshallah, we will hear about that in a few moments. But he was serving Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he used to try and follow everything that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did so much so that the companions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu was one of the closest in following every footstep of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam just like Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu later on. So he was the one who made sure I did it exactly how Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. How he drank, how he sat, how he spoke and everything. This man used to try and do that as he grew up and later on in his life as well. So Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu used to also hold the siwak. Siwak, that little piece of root that is used to clean the teeth. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had his and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu used to keep it for him and give it to him whenever he asked for it. So he literally served Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the early days. And yet subhanallah, he woke him up sometimes. You know, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would tell him, get me up at this time. So he would get him up. He would bring water for him and he would cover the place where he was bathing sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to serve at least our own parents. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to respect and honor those who have sacrificed to learn what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has brought and conveyed to us. Amen. So what happened with this man was something amazing. One day the companions were saying that, you know, Quraysh has not yet heard the Quran being recited loudly. So who can read a portion of the Quran in the presence of Quraysh right outside the Kaaba? Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, a young boy, he said, I will do that. They said, you, they'll beat you up. He said, well, Allah will protect me. So what if they beat me up? I will read. But you don't even have a big family to look after you and protect you and so on. You're a young boy who's from a very poor background. He said, I will do that. So he, he went to the Kaaba. 
and suddenly whilst the leaders of Quraysh were sitting he says Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Ar Rahman Allama al Quran Khalaqa al Insan Allama al Bayan and he continued with that Quraysh was listening very carefully they were impressed by this young boy and then one of them spoils the whole show by saying hey do you know what he's saying? Well, what is he saying? He is repeating words that are revealed. That man claims revelation comes to him, Muhammad This young boy is repeating those words. So once they caught on what was going on, they immediately got up and started beating the young boy. They beat him up quite a bit. And he went back to the companions later on. They told him, didn't we tell you they would beat you up? He said, Wallahi, the sweetness and the goodness that I've achieved and how I felt doing that. I don't mind going back tomorrow and doing it again. Subhanallah. What a young boy. What great sweetness did he feel calling out towards Allah. It is reported that after Muhammad sallallahu he was the next person who actually recited it aloud. And some of the narrations say that he was the first one who did it in that particular place. So he has the virtue. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us today. We are shy to even say a Muslim name. And to even look like Muslims sometimes, depending on which land we live on. So sometimes people ask you, what is your name? Instead of saying, my name is Muhammad, we say, it is Mo. Mo. My brother, Mo. Are you mowing the lawn or something? May Allah safeguard us. Wallahi, that is something dangerous. Don't spoil your name. At least no one's asking you to read the verses and so on. And today at this particular level, upon this level, but... At least your name, be proud of the fact this is my name. Let them know you're a Muslim, bare minimum. Allahu Akbar. May Allah help us, inshallah, to serve the Ummah in a way that we can, we can be from amongst those who have made those who are not Muslim realize the goodness of the deen. Amen. So this is one of the stories in the initial stages of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu as a young boy. Also Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought him up. So he learned a lot from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But he was very scared. He was very scared to narrate hadith. It is reported that he was one of those who wanted to say it word for word. Whenever he used to say, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to stop and shake. And sometimes he used to cry and he used to worry. People asked him, why are you doing this? He says, I fear saying a word that is wrong. And at the same time, when he finished saying what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had taught, for example, he narrates a hadith. And at the end, he would say, the Prophet ﷺ has said this or words similar to this just to make sure that he's covered himself to say if I've made a mistake Allah must not punish me because he's heard Muhammad ﷺ say whoever lies regarding what I've said is preparing their place in, in hellfire may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from hellfire so this was the man one day and we are going further in time Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu when he was the Amir al -Mu'mineen, he appointed Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu as the governor of the bank. When we say the bank here, we're talking of Baytul Mal. It's a specific Islamic system. So he says, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, you go to Kufa, you're in charge of the money and the wealth. So he went to Kufa and he was working. A group of people came from Kufa for Hajj. So Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu was speaking to them, how are things in Kufa? And it slipped his mind for a moment that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu was there. So the people of Kufa said, you know what? There is a man in Kufa who recites the Quran and he, he dictates the Quran from his head, cover to cover. So Umar ibn Khattab anhu got very angry because he was worried about people saying something false. And who is there so knowledgeable in Kufa? Who is there so knowledgeable who can actually do that? So he said, who is the man? They said, he's Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Immediately he calmed down. He cooled off completely. He says, Wallahi, that man is an encyclopedia in knowledge. Listen, I will tell you a story. So Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu tells them a story and it's narrated to us. And today we are hearing it. He says, I was with Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And we came out of the house a little bit late. We were discussing some affairs of the ummah. And we saw a man in the masjid, a young man in the masjid reading salah. And he was reading Quran in a beautiful voice. And Muhammad sallallahu stopped and he said, and we, we did not recognize who it was, but Muhammad sallallahu did. And he says, 
Whoever wants to read the Quran exactly as it was revealed should read it as Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu reads it. And he was known as Ibn Umm Abd. Oh, subhanallah, that was what he was known as. So the Prophet sallallahu says, read it as he reads it. So they heard for a while. And when he finished his prayer, he raised his hands and he was praying. He was making a dua, supplicating. So the Prophet sallallahu looked at him and said, ask, you will be given. Seek, you will be given. And he couldn't hear. But Umar ibn Khattab and Abu Bakr al-Siddiq who were listening to this, seek and you will be given, which means make your dua, it will be answered. So Umar ibn Khattab who says, you know, that night I decided the following morning, first thing I'm going to go to this young man, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud anhu, and tell him that you know what, you, the Prophet wasallam, said this about you, and when you were making a dua, he said, keep on asking, you will be given. So he says, when I arrived in the morning to inform him, I found out that Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu had already informed him and I learned that everything Abu Bakr is beating me in, subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all and bless us. So this is one of the virtues of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. So much so that one day Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa called him and told him, recite for me the Quran. So he says, oh messenger sallallahu alayhi wa you want me to recite for you the Quran and it was revealed upon you? He says, Wallahi, I love to hear it when you are reciting it. I love to hear it from others. And he made sure he read it. So he started reading Surah An-Nisa. And he got to a certain point where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِن كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَؤُلَاءِ شَهِيدًا how will it be the day when we bring witnesses from all the nations and we bring you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to bear witness against these, to say that you've delivered the message. And he found that that's where he was stopped. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was taken by it and the tears were rolling. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. My brothers and sisters, this man was not given wealth. He was poor. This man was not given a body. This man was not given high status. But when he came to Islam, Allah gave him knowledge and Allah gave him honor and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a good mention up to the day of Qiyamah when people will say his name, they will say radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him. So this is what Allah gave him in return. Now let's go to the story of the calves. He was such a thin person, small one. We said that already. One day he was climbing a tree in order to cut a siwak for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam from one of the branches. And the Sahaba radiallahu anhum happened to laugh at his calves because they were so small, they were like that of a bird. According to some narrations, they described him to be so thin and small and his calves were showing when he actually tiptoed to get this piece of wood. So when they laughed, Muhammad sallallahu said, you are laughing at this man's calves. Wallahi, in the eyes of Allah, in the scale of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are heavier than the Mount of Uhud. Subhanallah. That is the calves of this man. So he was known as Sahib al Saqain, the man with the calves. Then they knew this man, he is full of knowledge. And in the eyes of Allah, as light as he is, but he is very heavy. Just his calves are heavier than the Mount of Uhud. And this is a correct narration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What a great man. Subhanallah. He used to read the Quran in a beautiful way. And he was a person who they all respected. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu says he was an encyclopedia in knowledge. They say, لَقَدْ مُلِي أَفِقْهًا He was a person who was full of a deep understanding of Islam. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu who was a senior at one stage, he was known as knowledgeable. He says, if Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is here radiallahu anhu, don't ask me any questions. He is the man, subhanallah. And this is the great man, Allahu Akbar. Allahu, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Goodness. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu describes him one day. When he was seated, some of the people mentioned Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu and they said, this man, we haven't seen a better person, a better teacher than him. He is so patient. He has such great character. He has so deep knowledge and so on. So Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu says, are you serious? They said, yes, we are. He said, wallahi, I bear witness to what you have said and even more than what you have said for this man. He was a man whom 
when he read the Quran, whatever was halal, he ensured that he considered it halal. What was haram, he made it prohibited for himself, which means he adopted the Quran, not just recited it, but adopted it. This is why we say you can be a good reciter, but you will only be a good Muslim when you practice upon what you have recited. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us be good reciters and good Muslimin. So this was the great man. It is reported that Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu replaced him from his position in Kufa. So the people of Kufa loved him so much. He was one of the first and the last whom the entire population of Kufa loved without dispute. It was very difficult according to the narrations to ever get the love of all the people of Kufa because they are difficult people. This is according to the narrations of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. But Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, no one spoke ill of him. You know why? He did not speak ill of anyone else. When Uthman ibn Affan removed him and replaced him with someone else, some of the people tried to tell him, oh, maybe he found fault in you and whatever. He said, I will not utter one word against Uthman. They surrounded him and said, don't go. We will make sure that you live here. He said, I heard Muhammad sallallahu saying there will be fitan. There will be trials and tribulations and difficult times ahead. I do not want to be the door that opens those difficult times. I will go back and I will obey the instructions of the Khalifa to Muslimin, the Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu. And it is reported that he went back to Al Madinah al Munawwara. He passed away there when he was just over 60 years old in the year 32 Hijri, according to some of the narrations. And Abu Darda'i radiallahu anhu heard about his death and said, This man, we have lost a man that there is no similar to no one is similar to him may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him he has a lot of beautiful teachings abdullah ibn mas'ud radiallahu anhu one of them he says the greatest richness is contentment remember this the greatest of wealth is contentment the best of provision is piety the worst of blindness is the blindness of the heart not that of the eyes and then he says the greatest of sins is a lie to tell a lie and then he says the worst of earnings the most evil of your earnings is if you earn through interest and usury and the worst of what you could eat is if you eat the wealth of an orphan and if you forgive Allah will forgive you and if you want to protect yourself for the sake of Allah Allah will provide for you so these are some of the words of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and grant him Jannah. And may he make us from amongst those who meet up with these great heroes and heroines in Jannah. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the next great hero of ours this evening, Uthman ibn Mad'un radiallahu an, a man who never ever touched or drank alcohol in his life even prior to Islam. Uthman ibn Mad'un radiallahu anhu, he was an intelligent man in Quraysh, or in fact, he was from Makkah al Mukarramah. But his, he did not have one of those senior noble family lineages from amongst Quraysh. Uthman ibn Mad'un was a man whom, subhanallah, as a young person, he grew up looking at the people of Makkah. They were involved in drinking, in womanizing, in partying, and in music. That was their life. Every day and every other day. Like we have today, sometimes in the weekend, some people think life is all about partying and having fun and drinking and enjoying. And he tells himself, how can I drink? When his friends used to say, come, let's enjoy a little bit of drink. You know, it won't do you any harm. You know, the social drinking, as they say, social drinker. May Allah protect us. So what happened is, he says, how can I touch this for my brain to go? My brain will go and I did it with my own hands. I allow people to laugh at me because I'm drunk and I may commit incest whilst I'm drunk. How can I allow that to happen? Wallahi, I will never even taste this. So he's one of those who's never tasted alcohol even prior to Islam. So Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu makes mention of how he accepted Islam. And he says this man, he was walking once past the Kaaba and he saw Muhammad sallallahu sitting there and Muhammad sallallahu saw him seated and Muhammad sallallahu looks at him and says oh Uthman ibn Mad'un don't you mind coming to sit with me and let's talk because they knew each other from before and they had spoken many times before to each other so he sat with Muhammad sallallahu for a while and Muhammad sallallahu started speaking to him and whilst they were talking Muhammad sallallahu looked up to the sky and then he looked he brought his vision down he looked down 
he held his eyesight for a little while and then he continued speaking to Uthman ibn Mad'un. And so Uthman ibn Mad'un noticed this, but they continued speaking. When they completed the discussion, it happened once again. So he says, Oh Muhammad, وسلم, I've spoken to you many times. I've never seen you do this. What just happened? What, what, what have you done? He says, Oh Uthman, Jibreel has just come to me with revelation. He said, you mean Jibreel? He says, yes, the messenger of Allah from the skies came to me with revelation in the presence of Uthman ibn Mad'un. So what was the revelation? He says the revelation was I'm sure we hear it on a Friday every week, don't we? Subhanallah. The verse was revealed in the presence of Uthman ibn Mad'un. What does it mean? It means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs you to be just, to be good and kind, and to give the relatives, which means to reach out to relatives, to fulfill their rights in every way. So those are three instructions. And he prohibits you from engaging in immorality and evil and from oppression and transgression. So Uthman ibn Mad'un says, well, what you've just told me, these three and those three, these three are actually the conclusion of all goodness. And those are the sources of all evil. And I definitely believe that this is such a powerful word. I've been thinking for a long time about what Quraysh is doing. So much so that they knew about the alcohol story with Uthman ibn Mad'un. And the fact that he always thought about it and said life is not about partying. It's not about going out every other day. It's not about enjoyment. There is a greater meaning to life. And definitely it is here to fulfill the rights of one another, to fulfill the rights of your maker, to be able to be just and kind, to protect yourself from immorality and evil and oppression. He says, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna ka abduhu wa rasooluh. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah and that you are from amongst or you are the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amongst other messengers, the final one, subhanallah. So Quraysh started harming him. As we said, he was not from amongst those who had a noble family to look after him or to protect him. They harmed him so much that when the hijrah to Habasha, to Africa, when the migration to Africa, when the door of that was opened, he was one of the first who went out with the, a few others, subhanallah. And then when they were in Africa, rumors spread, and oh, Umar ibn Khattab has accepted Islam. Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib has accepted Islam. These are radiallahu anhum are powerful men. And Quraysh is now turned to Islam. This was an intentional rumor by Quraysh in order to bring people back. This is why we say, do not believe rumor. Today we are living in the age of rumor. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, there will come a time when false will be considered true and what is true will be considered false. And subhanallah, where the most private of statements will be uttered out in public. Today we have the internet that actually helps us commit that sin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. But worse than the sin is us who believe it. We believe a rumor when we see it, subhanAllah, without realizing today is the age of photoshopping and editing. Even if you see a video, sometimes it could be a video that is fake and false. I always tell myself the Hollywood movies look so real. What stops them from making something that is actually fake and telling us that this is real? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to distinguish between what is right and wrong. It is only Iman and Taqwa that will give you the ability to do that. So in Islam, you do not believe everything. You have to make sure that it is authentic and you must make sure that you learn the lesson. So anyway, when they came back to Mecca, Quraysh started persecuting the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa who returned from Africa. But Uthman ibn Mad'un had a very close ally. Who was he? The father of Khalid ibn al-Walid, known as al-Walid ibn al-Mughira. Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira was one of the strong men of Quraysh. So he struck an alliance of protection with al-Walid ibn al-Mughira. So Uthman ibn Mad'un was not harmed by anyone in Quraysh because this sort of protection was common at the time. If you knew a big man, you know, if you know the big boys, they say, don't worry, no one will touch you, subhanallah. So these were the big guns of Quraysh. No one harmed Uthman ibn Mad'un radiallahu anhu after that. But he was witnessing his friends being harmed. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa being persecuted and the others being persecuted. So one day he decided, I cannot live in this luxury whilst the rest of them are being persecuted. He went back to Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira and tells him, do you know what? Your protection, 
take it back. Let's go to the Kaaba, make an announcement to Quraysh that the protection is no longer valid. So Walid ibn Mughira said, what happened? Did someone harm you? Something happened to you? He said, no, because my people are being harmed. How can I enjoy this goodness when everyone around me is being persecuted? Where would I be if I were from amongst those who lived comfy whilst everyone else was being persecuted? So Al-Walid says, okay, if that's what you want, it's fine, but they will harm you. He says, I don't mind. So they went to the Kaaba and Al-Walid ibn Mughira made an announcement regarding Uthman ibn Mad'un radiallahu anhu. This man is no longer under my protection. Quraysh was shocked. So Uthman ibn Mad'un says, yes, he is telling the truth. I'm no longer under his protection. And just after some time, one of the poets known as Labid ibn Rabi'a, he was a poet. He was saying some statements. So he was saying a statement. He says, everything besides, everything besides Allah is false. That's a correct statement. So Uthman ibn Mal'un says, that's right. Loudly, in front of everyone. Then he says, and all the goodness is going to disappear. So Uthman ibn Mal'un says, no. The goodness of paradise will never disappear. So Labid ibn Rabi'a, he was a poet of note. He never ever liked people to interfere in his statements. So he got up and he says, Quraysh, since when do you people argue and debate with the poet? So they said, well, this man, he has left the religion of his forefathers and followed the other man, meaning Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and we have nothing to do with him. So immediately they got up and they started beating him up. Uthman ibn Mad'un radiallahu anhu. So much so that the narrations make mention of him having lost an eye that day. He lost an eye. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him goodness. It is reported that thereafter he felt in his heart that I have also been persecuted just like the rest have for what is right, for justice. Because he stood up in the face of someone who was uttering a statement that was wrong. And he corrected him to say there is paradise. The people of Quraysh used to say, Ma hiya illa hayatuna dunya namutu wa nahiya. We have no other life. It's just this life of the world. When you die, it's, it, that's it. It's over, you cut and everything is finished. Some people to this day believe that. But we believe there is a life after death. If it was only for this life, 70 years is too little. Allah would have given us much more. To say just enjoy for a thousand, two thousand years and then we'll close you and you can die like the rest of the animals. Allahu Akbar. But no, 70 years only, it means there is something bigger than that. There is something greater than that. Imagine today we are sitting here, full concentration with our hearts, souls and minds. And at the same time, there will be a day when we will go. Well, we cannot just disappear into thin air. We have to have gone somewhere where Allah knows. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take care of us on that day. And may He grant us Jannah. So this man, he was from amongst those who who told uh, uh, Al-Walid ibn Mughira that I would not like to be under your protection. From this day, I want to be under the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was his statement. So he chose the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did the hijrah to, to Medina with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa meaning when they were instructed to do it, he was one of those who also engaged in that hijrah. And he became a person who was not interested in this worldly life. So much so that he wore clothing that was tatty and torn because he had no other clothing. And he used to stay, he used to sleep separately from his wife. Muhammad once picked this up and told him, you have a duty to fulfill and you, your wife has a right over you that you should fulfill. Meaning you should share the same bed. Do not sleep in a different bedding. So that is when he asked Muhammad about himself and then he followed what Muhammad had said. And Muhammad wept on the day and he asks his companions a question. He says, you see the poverty. Do you know or how do you think the day will be when you will be given clothing that you will be changing twice a day? Subhanallah, morning and evening. Amazing. Today we wear our PJs in the evening and during the day we have other clothing. And sometimes we change our clothing twice or thrice. You have two functions, you're wearing two different clothing. Subhanallah. Or mind you, in Malaysia you have an excuse because you sweat, you have to change it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. MashaAllah. So, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaking to those who had one pair of clothing only. They wore it for a month on end and washed it only when they needed to. He says, 
What do you think will be the condition of yourselves when you will be having so much clothing that you will change it more than once in a day and you will be having so much food that you put one piece of meat by your mouth and there is another one waiting for you. The Sahaba anhum said, well, we would like to see that day. Muhammad says, Wallahi, that day will come for my ummah. And Wallahi, we are, we are facing it now. Wallahi, that day will come for my ummah. But you are in a better position today than you would be on that day. Which means you are stronger in Iman. You have a better chance of entering paradise than those on that day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. May He make us from those who are strong and steadfast. So this was one of the uh, ahadith or sayings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he had seen Uthman ibn Mad'un radiallahu anhu. This was a man who witnessed the battles with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just the battle of Badr according to some narrations. Because in Medina Munawwara, he was the first from amongst the males of the Muhajireen who passed away. He got sick just after the battle of Badr according to the most correct opinions and he passed away thereafter and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa made a dua for him. And this was a great dua for this man because he was the first from amongst the muhajireen, the men of them to pass away in Medina Munawwara. Who was the one first from amongst the females? Before him, Ruqayya binti Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she passed away whilst they were out in Badr. When they came back, he heard the news of her passing away. Remember Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu stayed back from Badr because he had to take care of his wife who was sickly. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came back, he found that his daughter Ruqayya binti Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had passed away. She was buried in Baqiyah and thereafter this man, Uthman ibn Mad'un radiallahu anhu was also buried there. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. These were the people who struggled. They strove in order for the deen to get to us. They lived. They are the ones who understood that whilst we can enjoy the life, we should never enjoy it in the disobedience of Allah. Life is not all about partying and having fun and you know playing and having games every single day. No, we should know how to strike the balance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking us away soon. If we are from amongst those who has prepared for the day, we will be those who have achieved goodness in the dunya and the akhirah. And this is why we end with the dua in the Quran. Allah says, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ From amongst those are the ones who have a good share, a good portion. They are those who say, O oh our Lord, give us goodness in this world and goodness in the hereafter and protect us from the punishment of the hellfire. May we be from amongst those. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahi bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.